I've got another mega mailbag. In fact, this one's so big I'm going to call it a mega, mega mailbag. I've got about 16 items here. So stick around and see what I've got this time. Don't forget to check out the links down below for any items I've got here on the video or any of my other videos. I've got lots and lots of stuff, so use the links down below to go to Banggood or AliExpress or whatever. Helps fund the channel, helps me up. And thanks to Patreons as well for supporting me. I've had some people there which have supported me for quite a while, so those are very much appreciated people. We have a couple of antennas. These are supposed to be 868 megahertz. As you can see there. Are they magnetic? Yes, they are. Excellent. I might get some more of these if they seem alright. And this ends a SMA connector, which should fit onto any of those wireless units, which I don't have sitting around in front of me. Wait, wait. This will do. Here's one. This is what else came. Another wireless unit. So that should plug on there. There you go. So the other modules that turn up here there are some more A68 230Ds. So these are 1 watt versions. Now what I've actually been doing with these is I've been programming not to use full output. I'm actually reducing the output power in the software and running them at the lowest power setting. The reason I've got the higher power ones is I'd rather have something which is powerful running at a very low stress level I suppose versus something which is not so powerful which is going flat out so I just like to have the longevity of not stressing things so and this has got a bit of a dent in it which is interesting that casing there hopefully it doesn't matter as long as they work and another module there exactly the same one and this one is not dented so hopefully it's just minor this is shield there's probably nothing too important about that so I've got a bunch of these now so I'm trying to stock up on bits and pieces that I might need as I always tend to do if I need the extra range or if I have issues with interference or something like that, I could use these instead and stick this on the roof and improve the performance. Okay, nothing too exciting. These are just some 3.5mm TRS cables, quite short ones. I think they're 30 centimetres and like, are they? I'm trying to see what it says on here. This says 3.5mm. The length's not on there, I don't know. It's probably 20 centimetres even. It's quite short. Thought it'd be handy for doing bits and pieces and small interconnects. But this project I'm working on, but these are probably going to be too short. These are power supplies, I think. Voltage regulator modules. So I've got 15. So these little switch mode buck converters anyway. 5 volt supplies. So yeah, these basically replace uh, like a 7805 regulator. That's what the pinout's based on. And so you can drop this into that position and use it as this little switch mode supply. So it's much more efficient than the little linear voltage regulator. So these ones are rated at 5 volts. Nice and compact. Instead of using a linear regulator. So if you worry about getting too much heat dissipation, that sort of stuff, then you can get these. I think these are rated for 2 amps or 3 amps, and I can't actually remember. But there'll be links for these down below, as long as I haven't lost the links anyway. Yeah, there'll be links. And the other ones are 3.3 volt regulators. So I've got both types. So I've got 5 of those, 10 of those. These are 3.5 mil stereo sockets. So this can go onto like a casing, you know, chassis mount, or what well, these are obviously chass chassis mount devices, but yeah, three terminals on the back there, and it's just 3.5 mil, so you can stick it on the chassis and have a jack on the outside. And yeah, so I've got, what, six of those things, again, for my project. So what we've got this time, these are, be the booster buck converters, I don't remember. Doesn't specify, but it's another little switch mode thing. And we've also got some more linear regulators, these ones. These are, yeah, these are, I think, 3.3 volt regulators. AMS 11, well, 3.3 volt, I'm just reading it on there. So linear 3.3 volt regulators on this one. Handy little package, look like the 705s, same kind of deal there. And this is what's in the other one. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to use these. So it's adjustable as well. So I've got a bunch of those. Yeah, having a stock of them from time to time is quite handy because you, know, you, know, you need to build something, you've got the bits and pieces, you need to assemble it. Power supply stuff's always something you use. Packaging doesn't look wonderful if they are. I think they are. Yeah. I'll show you one. Can you kind of see it? I suppose you can. These are TFT displays, 4 inch TFT displays. There's actually touchscreen ones, so you've got a little stylus that goes with it as well. SD card for programming, I think, putting your software on it. So I've got four of these. I thought I'd have a play around with them. The packaging wasn't that great, I thought it would be a bit, bit better protected than that, but they weren't. Hopefully, there's no damage. We'll see, I suppose. It took a little while to get here. These are, I ordered these quite early on, so it's been over a month for these to arrive. I haven't got time to play with these now, but I will be.
I think these are some more lower modules, different style ones. RF96, so they're probably RF95s most likely. The RF95 and RF96 have both got the same number on the packaging. I don't know why they've done that, but I believe they're RF95s. Four of those in there. I thought I'd probably got antennas with them. I don't see them in there. Hmm, maybe not. Excellent, I've been waiting for these, and this is exactly what I was wanting to find. So I have 10 BMS modules. So a two cell BMS, so you can use these for 18650s. And these are basically charge controllers and protection circuitries. Hopefully there's markings, yes there is, there we go. Battery positive minus, power, and BM should be the central terminal between the two cells. So you've got battery negative to there, then there to there, between the two cells. And power comes out of those ones. And that's running through a MOSFET. That's the controller. That little chip that's there, U1, and these are the MOSFETs here. So if they get too far discharged, it will disconnect the cells and shut it off to protect them from uh, potentially catching fire. And these are some more buck or boost converters. I'm not sure which one it is. Again, I have to have a look at the listings. Can't tell just by looking at them. It probably is a way of telling just by looking at them, but I've got to know what it is. So input and output and a fixed voltage output. I'm not quite sure which these will be. They're probably 3.3 volts. I've been buying some 3.3 volt stuff recently because I haven't really had much. There'll be links anyway, down there somewhere. In there. And these are some USB host shields. So I've already shown you these before. It's got some more of them. They look exactly the same. There's two of those because I wanted to have a couple of spares. There you go. It says on there, that's what they're called, in case you need to find them. Basically these have got uh, USB high spill into them and a whole bunch of SPI inputs or outputs. So you have to use it as a GPIO expander. I haven't actually tried using these yet. They're supposed to be very simple to use, I suppose. But I haven't actually had a go yet. So much stuff to get through. Hope you're still sticking around. Watch to the end of the video because it helps my channel, which helps me, which also helps you. So send your own interest. Alright, what are these? More voltage regulators, but they don't appear to be marked. These are more of those, very similar to the first ones I showed. Pin out based on a 7805, or 7800 series I should say. But the voltage doesn't appear to be marked. That's helpful. What is it the middle one? Is that middle one marked? What do you think? Hmm, I'll have to try these out and figure out what they are. What's in this? Little keyboard. Yeah. I bought this for this project I'm working on. I did get a waterproof keyboard which I showed in a previous mailbag and I had issues with that one with the buttons like multiple presses. You push it once and it will like force trigger or a button over here will trigger because of the being rubber membrane. It was obviously deformed from being rolled up in its case. And then it's actually been laid out flat for a while. It's actually got a lot better but it's still, I don't trust it completely. It needs to be perfect. It needs to be, you know, be accurate button presses. So I thought I'd get one of these keyboards. This is pretty cheap and it's compact and small which is what I wanted. It's you know, something quite easy to transport. And it's not waterproof obviously but being cheap means I can kind of chuck it in a bag as well being small. Some kind of waterproof covering hopefully protect it. And if it does get wet being cheap I'm not overly worried about it. You know it's not likely to get wet every time it gets used but if it happens once a year so what. So yeah I'm most happy it's actually work with the project. I'm using a USB host which the keyboard has to work with and the USB host stuff cannot have a USB hub built into the keyboard because if it's got a hub it won't work. This does not have a hub, which is why I bought it, or well, another reason I bought it, so hopefully this will work on it. Okay, this is a DHL package. I think I know what's in here, but I'm not 100% sure. It does have one of these lift tab things. Let's have a look, see if that works. Yeah, it does. So some RS components. I haven't bought anything from there for a little while. No, they're not capacitors. These are connectors, and hopefully there's two different sizes. There we go, you've got four pin connectors, ribbon connectors. You're supposed to just push the wires in. Let's get a closer look. So you just push the wire into the connector and it grabs it in theory. I don't know how good they actually are. And we've got these ones here, which are, these are seven pin, similar kind of thing, I think. Where you push the wires into the into the uh, top of the housing there. So I've just got these for my project, so I'm going to easily hook up bits of ribbon cable. Then I'm going to do individual cables and soldering stuff up. I'm going to press them in and hopefully that'll be good enough. Uh, yeah, we'll see. These are right angled connectors. Let's try and get one out. What are they called? DuPont connectors, I suppose. You can plug into them. But these are a lot better IDC, but they're right angle and you can like do ball to ball interconnects with them. I don't think I've got any pins around. I've got oh, maybe I've got a single in line one here. Also, you have a dual in line for this, but you can mount it on the board edge. If you've got two right angle ones, you can put two boards in edge to edge, which is what I actually got them for. That's my project to actually do that to connect two boards end to end. 
but um, I ended up changing why I did it, so I didn't need them right now. Oh, look, there's another ones to go with them. That's what I was trying to show you. So yeah, keep it next in those down below. But very handy little things to have. And I'll get the 40 pin ones because you can just cut them off to the length you need. Be cheaper that way. All right, what's this one? We've got a few items left, so stick around. We're almost done. It's more of these 2.42 inch OLED displays. There you go. A couple more like this. Now these are by default set up as SPI, but you can convert them to I squared C. Now I've actually recorded some video on that, and you may or may not see it before this video. I'm not sure. Depends when I get around to publishing it. But I've done some video showing how to convert these things to uh, to be I squared C instead of SPI. It's pretty easy to do. Just takes a little bit of time. Oh, these took ages to turn up. Okay, it's been like must be six weeks. These are some. As we know, Pro Micros, but these are the 3.3 volt versions. I bet they haven't got marked either. No, not marked. I don't know why they never mark them. It's really irritating. So I have to make sure I don't get these mixed up by 5 volt ones because I hate to put a 5 volt one in when I've got a 3 volt circuit or vice versa. Certainly want to put a 3 volt, 3.3 volt one on a 5 volt circuit. So I have to make sure I mark these up and uh, keep them separate from my existing ones. It's only having a range of different things. And here's the last thing. What I'm sticking by to the end. Click on a few adverts where you're at it, will you? That'll be helpful too. I'm just joking, you don't have to. It'd be nice if you can, but it's fine. I'd actually do better if you buy things using my links instead. It helps him far more than the uh, advertising revenue it does. Okay, these are actually surprisingly fast to arrive. So these are little rubber boots. Well, they're actually PVC, I think. Plasticized PVC, I suspect. So let's see if that's actually the right size. Yes, it is. Actually, that's really good. So these are little covers for BNC jacks. So I've got a bunch of these to cover up the BNC jacks on my all my scopes and bits and pieces to help protect them, keep the dust out, that sort of thing. Just a good idea to keep the jacks covered up if you don't if you're not actually using them. Also reduce the chance of any static electricity um, surges and that sort of stuff on the jacks if you brush against one and you're not earth properly and that sort of stuff. I've got quite a few. I don't need this many, but that's the smallest quantity of these I could buy in this size. It wasn't that much. I think it was five or ten dollars something like for a pack of this. It wasn't that much at all for this many. But it means I've got probably a lifetime supply of the thing so Excellent. Make sure you click the bell icon and subscribe and that sort of stuff down below and comment as well. Anything you want to discuss down here that you've seen today, have a chat down below in the comments. I'll read every comment. I will respond if I, if I think it needs responding to. So feel free to ask questions and that sort of stuff too. And um, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. And sorry about so many mailbag videos. I've got so much stuff. And once I get this project out of the way and finish with, then I'll be able to get back into doing repairs and stuff like that. I haven't much time for it recently. So I know I've put my repairs off for the past month or two. I've just been so busy with other things. So I will be getting other repair stuff done. I've got some projects already queued up. So, you know, stick around. Bear with me. Catch you later. Bye.